Hello everybody. Welcome to my fork oil lowering video. Uh, I've already done quite a bit of work. I have uh, swept up the garage and uh, migrated the entire studio over to my handmade workshop table. So this is the entire video studio. And today we're going to talk about this. This is the plan to lower the fork oil on my NC700X, which is a 2013 model. I've already cleaned up, swept the floor, I put cardboard on the floor. I have clearly suspended the bike because it's hanging in the air. Uh, I've got the tire off the ground. Let's, uh, let's go over and just make sure that that's going to spin. And uh, I should probably crank that up a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we're going to give that a pop. Come over here and give that a pop here. So these do stretch a little bit even though they're really strong. And uh, even the bars will bend a little bit. So uh, that front wheel is off the ground. Okay. Uh, we have prepared the bike. So we're over here. We have added cloth on both sides to protect the bike from any spills and uh, loosen the top bolts on the triple tree. So uh, I have a wrench for that and I'm just gonna show you where we need to loosen that. You need to get a wrench about this size. So with a mini hex key wrench, loosen the triple tree bolts. The next thing you wanna do is loosen the compression on the caps of the forks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unwind the compression we to make sure this side is loose, and it is. Then we're gonna take the tension off of this side here. Okay, back to the list. Uh, we have loosened the bolts on the triple tree. We have loosened the fork caps. Uh, the next thing is to remove the caps. And we're going to do that right now. What you're going to need is you're going to need a 19 millimeter socket for these particular caps. These are YSS caps. These are not stock. So your caps might have a different size. Now we're over here with the, uh, the caps. Getting the socket on is a little tight. You may have to push the cables out of the way. I do have a bar riser on which uh, makes the tension tighter on these cables. So what I'm going to do is just set the wrench up and pop that loose. These should not be tight. They should just come freely with a short wrench. So I'm just cracking these loose now. There's a certain point where uh, they'll spin loose. I always grease these so I make sure they're well lubricated before I put them back in. And I don't have a lot of spring compression, so they're not that difficult to work with. Make sure they look right. Everything seems fine, no cross threading. And put them in a bag that you have nearby. Same thing over here. Spin them off with your fingers. They should be very easy. Lift them out. Put them in a the bag nearby and put the bag aside. Once you're finished, make sure you put uh, some covers over the open holes. Put the covers on both sides so uh, you don't have any uh, bugs or anything dropping into the forks. Okay, we're, we're back to the plant. Uh, we have the caps in the bag. We've covered the forks so the bugs don't fall in because they surely will. Check the notes. Uh, so we're over here at the Honda service manual. And as I flip this open, we're gonna go to FF, front forks. There it is. In the past, I have gone from 215 from the top of the fork with all of the parts in to 220 millimeters with all of the parts in. And uh, we did a test where we dropped the bike off of nine inches of uh, wood blocks and uh, that was a ramp jump. And that gave us about three and a half inch inches of travel. And I know the bike has a lot more travel than that. 
So we're going to probably take out about two inches of fork oil today. So that's going to be about, what, uh, six centimeters or so? Uh, 2.5 is, I think, an inch, so we're going to go with uh, five. Uh, five centimeters. So uh, let's see where that takes us. This is a, a pit posse uh, oil level tool. A fork oil level gauge is what it says. Um, the syringe broke after the first, uh, say, 30 minutes of use. Uh, so uh, we got something out of my wife's uh, nursing bag and we're going to attach this to that hose and uh, we're going to draw about uh, to 20 millimeters plus five so 270 millimeters or so of fork oil from the very bottom so we're going to need about uh, 270 millimeters. I don't think this goes that high, so we might have to clamp something up here on the hose. I've pulled out my carpenter's ruler and uh, I'm checking this against the end there and we're going all the way up and it looks like we can hit 270 millimeters. So yep, that is about two inches more than where I was before. And it looks like we're not at the end of the gauge yet, so it looks like that's going to work. We're going to take this and insert it over into the fork tube and see if we can draw out the oil. Here we are over at the fork tube. Uh, this took a little work. I needed both hands free. Uh, you kind of have to spin the ring down past the hoses here to get this all the way in. So that's all the way down. Now we're going to get out the boob cam and we're going to see if we can draw some oil out of there. Here we are back at the bike. Here's the syringe, my wife's nursing syringe. And we're gonna do a draw. We're gonna see if we can get oil. And we've got blood. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So we're drawing oil. I have to be real careful. I can't push the oil back in. I have to keep drawing as much as I can. That's not going to be enough. So this might take a couple of draws. This is going to get messy. So what it means is, is I'm going to have to take the gauge out. It's going to drip. I'm going to have to push the oil into a bottle and then come back and repeat the draw. That's what this means. So, uh, I'm not finished yet, I'm not seeing any air bubbles, I'm not hearing a slurp. I'm going to have to dispense the oil in a container and come back and do it again. Here I've set up a uh, container of used oil and I'm going to bring the syringe from the bike over to here and I'm going to squirt the oil into here. So this is where it gets ugly, is you have to remove this. Now, I'm gonna go get a cloth. Paper towel should work just fine. Okay, so uh, a little caution is, uh, is worth a lot here. Now, I'm going to take this and we're going to bring this over here into the used oil container and we're going to squirt it back in. Now, I didn't get all of it out of the hose. I did push as much as I could back into the used oil container. I'll take it and wipe it, bring it back over to the bike, and reinsert it. Try not to drip. Now, I told you earlier that you have to kind of spin it a little bit and get it in there. So now that's all the way in. 
We're gonna do another draw. This time we don't have so much air in the system. Just gonna keep pulling. Now, when you're working with these, be careful about pulling the syringe all the way out. If you do that, you'll have a mess on your hands. So we took that all the way to the end. We're gonna bring it out. Gonna try not to bring the cloth with us. Ready, set, and good. Bring it over here. Can you tell I've done this once before? Um, there is still a red spot over there on the garage ceiling. Uh, so uh, yeah, lesson learned. Squeeze the fluid into the used oil container. and then bring it back. So keep the cloth ready, put it over the end, bring it back, drop it in there. Spin it around a couple times, drop it in. Set the gauge, set the gauge down firmly against the suspension each time. Let's do another draw. Careful not to pull it all the way out. Bring it up. Got the end covered. Bring it over. I'm going to continue to do this until I get a slurp over at the bike, telling me that I'm drawing air. I wanted to show you what this looked like when I was drawing air. Uh, for this particular part of it, I want to make sure the gauge is you know, up against the bottom of the spring. So that's, that's against the back of the fork. Now keep an eye on the hose. I'm going to pull on the syringe and you're going to see air bubbles coming through that. Okay, so I'm drawing air now. To bring that out, cover it with my finger, bring it over, and that is the last draw for that side. So I'm not going to repeat this again for the other side, I'm just going to do the other one, and then we're going to finish up. We've come back to the book. We've marked the book uh, 270 millimeters from the top, uh, February 2022. Now we can close the book and put it away forever. Ah, that's where my file got to. I was wondering about that. Eh? Here we have the fork caps. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kiss them with just a little bit of grease. There and there. And there, just kind of put a little bit into the threads. Just kiss it there and there, just smooth it out. There we go. Okay, so they're greased up and ready to be reinstalled. Okay, let's just make sure that everything's about the same. All right, so they're at about the same level. Let's take the first one over and install it. Move the cover. Sorry about that. We're just going to set that in and then you can see. 
wiggle it and find the threads. Don't just start spinning and cranking away. I can tell that that is doing just fine. Now I've got some tension on that. Let's go get the other one. Alright, now we can get a tool and tighten them in. Make sure you know how many rings there are. And snug them exactly the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six rings. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six rings. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come back and snug them later one more time with the bike on the ground. Always go back to the plan one last time. So uh, we installed the caps, we set the preload, we tightened the upper bolts twice, even with the bike on the ground. Now we have a cleanup rags, bungee straps, cardboard, oil draw tool, which is still in the garbage can, uh, sockets and tools, and then we gotta wipe off the bike, and then it's time for the test ride, yeah! By removing two inches of fork oil, I have picked up a half an inch of travel for everyday riding. 
I thought everybody would like to see this chart here. The static sag was barely changed at about a quarter of an inch. Rider sag was increased slightly to a uh, little greater than an inch. The driveway test, uh, that's when I go up the driveway and hit the ramp up. Um, 3.5 inches is what it was and it's now a little bit bigger than that. Uh, negligible change there. The real useful travel, the travel that I experience every day on the road, well that has changed. It was about three and a half inches, it is now nearly four inches. So that is really, you know, wonderful. I have actually made a measurable improvement in the way my suspension works. Uh, the nine inch drop test, which we're gonna have to do with the uh, wooden ramp in the backyard. Stay tuned for that, and we'll see what that's gonna be later on. Here we are getting set up for another nine inch ramp jump. So exciting. If you're gonna do this, make sure you have all your safety equipment on. Uh, don't do this in the rain. It is raining right now. Helmet, boots, gloves, make sure your phone's nearby, body armor. Let's give it a whirl. Let's see where we're at right now. I'm real curious as to what that is. Nope, we're we're three and three quarter. We're about the same as we were last time. So I don't know if you can see that. About three and three quarter. 